Hello everyone, it's Corey and Jennifer, and we have a few DIY high-end looks for less to share. Today we'll be recreating a French Creole doormat from Ballard Designs priced at $35. We'll tackle a mango wood orb and distressed ceramic orb from Kirkland's priced at $7.99 a piece, which I fell in love with while we were browsing the store a few weeks back. I loved the color of them and thought they would be perfect addition to our home. Another popular item with many designer stores is the footed bowl, like this one from A Floral for $320, from Pottery Barn for $99, and even World Market for $79.99. We can't wait to share, so let's get to creating. When it comes to the footed bowls, I would have to say I was drawn mostly to the A Floral and Pottery Barn one, so I will be kind of mixing the look of both of these. Now, while at Hobby Lobby, we were heading down the clearance aisle, and I found this wooden bowl, which was regularly priced at $37.99 for $9.49. I thought it would be the perfect size for our project, and I loved the ball detail at the top, which I thought would give it some much needed character. One of the little wooden balls was loose, but nothing some hot glue couldn't fix. And as for the base, I knew just the item. They carry these terracotta pots for 99 cents and it fit our bowl perfectly. Before we could add the terracotta pot, we needed to remove the protective pads at the bottom of the bowl along with all the stickers. I then set about fixing the little ball that was loose at the rim of the bowl. I used hot glue and it tends to ooze, so I made sure to clean up any excess as I didn't want it to show after being painted. Before gluing our pieces together, I wanted to be sure all the sticker residue and dust was removed, so I gave both the bowl and the pot a wipe down with some of my spray away window cleaner, which is ammonia free and doesn't leave a residue. I wanted to be sure I centered the base, so I used a Sharpie to give me a guide to use once I was ready to glue them together. Using E6000 for a more permanent bond and some hot glue for a quicker bond, I set about gluing the pot to the bowl, making sure to line up the base with my pre-marked guide. We then used some books to weigh down the piece to allow the glue some time to dry. Since I like our creations to look as seamless as possible, I had Corey add some joint compound to the gap where the pot met the bowl. Now be sure to wipe up any excess compound with a damp cloth. You can certainly skip this step and it will look just as good. We allowed the joint compound to cure overnight and in the morning, Corey gave it a light sanding before I began the painting process. I'm going to use the tried and true method of baking soda and acrylic paint to achieve my pottery look. I liked the base color of the A floral bowl, but the speckling and darker rim of the pottery barn bowl. So I'm going to do a mix of the two. And for my base color, I used baking soda mixed with the color mushroom. And I will later use the color raw umber to add to the rim and to use for the speckling. And I also used the color linen for a wash to give the bowl a more aged appearance. You can use any color combination that suits your style and home. I made sure to use a good amount of baking soda for the first coat so that it would add a lot of texture. You want the paint thick, but not so thick that it won't spread when you paint it on. If you get it too thick, just add more paint to the mix. 
I didn't mind the darker color showing through around the rim since I planned on adding a darker color anyway, but I did use a small sponge applicator to dab in some mushroom paint to camouflage some of those areas. You may want to keep this in mind when looking for a bowl to recreate the look you want to achieve. A smooth rimmed bowl would be much easier to paint. Once the first coat had dried, which took less than 30 minutes, I applied a thinner mix of baking soda and mushroom paint for a second coat. And this is how the bowl was looking after both coats had dried. I was ready to tackle the aging effect. I did this by using the color linen mixed with water to create a wash. Now I do begin adding this wash by pouncing it on with a paper towel, but after I realized I really wanted the overall look to be primarily whitewashed. So I went back over the entire bowl by wiping the wash on. I did like how some of the pounced paint showed through darker in areas, so I am happy that I did that technique first, but if you just want it whitewashed, you can skip the first step and just wipe on the wash. Um, you could even use a sponge brush instead of a paper towel. And this is how the bowl is looking so far. Next, I went in with the color raw umber, watered down to make it less opaque, and began pouncing it on the rim. And since the Pottery Barn bowl had the darker color blending down from the rim into the bowl and on the outer rim, I brought that darker color down slightly. Also, I added it to the base and where the base connects to the bowl for added effect. I also used the damp paper towel with the dark color to wipe over the whole bowl without adding any additional paint to blend everything together. For the final step, I used a toothbrush to create speckling with the dark color. I absolutely love the effect it created. And don't forget to add the speckling to the inside of the bowl as well. Once everything had dried, I had Corey give it a good coat of poly in satin. I usually use matte on these types of creations, but I really wanted this one to have a slight sheen, and I love how it turned out.
For the A Floral Bowl, we saved $308, and for the Pottery Barn Bowl, we saved $87. When I saw these orbs at Kirkland's, I knew I wanted to recreate them to save myself some money. I love the color combination and the textures. And while we were at Hobby Lobby, we picked up these smaller paper mache balls priced at $1.29 a piece. I knew we needed something softer to create the ridging for the manga orbs. So I opted for these sturdy styrofoam balls priced at $1.99. You may be able to get these on sale, but I'm not sure how often Hobby Lobby puts their arts and crafts on sale. Now you will definitely want this firmer type of styrofoam so that it doesn't fall apart when creating the ridging in them. We used a fork to create this look since our salad forks have sharp tines. And the styrofoam had a seam that Corey knocked down with a bit of sanding first. He then began making the ridging to create a similar look to the mango wood orbs from Kirkland's. Just use firm and steady pressure. This can be as random or as basic as you like. This is your creation, so just have fun with it. The base color of the distressed ceramic orbs was a terracotta, so I had a few to choose from and I ultimately decided on toasted terracotta because it was the deepest in color and I knew I'd be layering lighter colors on top to give it that aged appearance like the Kirkland's orb has. I again mixed the base color of toasted terracotta with baking soda to give the rough texture so our DIY orbs would most closely resemble the Kirkland orbs. I gave each small orb a single coat and set aside to dry as I worked on the larger ones. For these orbs, I knew the main base color was gray, so I used the only gray I had on hand, which is country gray. Now since these are styrofoam and they already have a unique texture, I just used paint without any baking soda. Once the first coat had dried, I went in with a second coat for each orb. For the ceramic orbs, I wanted to add extra texture, so I pounced the baking soda and paint mixture on to create raised spots on the orbs. When the two coats had dried, I began creating the color variations on each orb. For the mango wood orbs, they had layers of white and terracotta mixed throughout, so I began first with some linen, then down with water. I randomly placed this effect, and now there's no right or wrong way here, so just be random. I also went heavier with this lighter color than I do with the darker reddish brown color that comes later. For this next step, I used the color Rusted Pipe since I thought it most closely resembled the red-brown color of the Kirkland's orbs. And again, I thinned it down with water to make it less opaque. As a final step for these, I wanted to blend everything together, so I used the color Antique White mixed with water to pounce over the entire orb to create a more muted appearance. The first color I'm going to layer down on the ceramic orb is rusted pipe and again I'm going to water it down and just pounce this again all over to lighten the base color of the orb.
The last color I'm going to layer on is the color linen and again I'm going to water it down and I use this color more sparingly. The orb on the left is the one with the final linen color applied. To keep them looking good, I had Corey give them all a light coating of sealant, again in satin. And I couldn't be happier with how they all turned out. The perfect color combination for the autumn season. I saved myself $44 by making them instead of buying them. For our last DIY, I wanted to recreate this darling French Creole doormat I found on Ballard Designs. Now this mat isn't as overpriced as some of the other items we created today, but I still knew I could save myself some money, and since we had a huge success with our Christmas doormat we made, I thought why not give it a try. You can find plain Quora mats at Hobby Lobby, and I lucked out the day we were there and it was on sale for $6.49. They are regularly priced at $12.99. Corey first started figuring out the dimensions so we could determine how many diamonds we would need to cover our mat. The mat we purchased measures 18 inches by 30 inches, and we came up with a three and a quarter inch by three and a quarter inch square for our diamond pattern. We didn't have a large enough piece to create an entire stencil with the cardboard, so we had to cut individual strips, but you could just cut out the diamond pattern on a larger piece of cardboard. Either way, it will work. Once we had the measurements, Corey began making a grid pattern that he could use for our stencil. To help keep him from cutting the wrong diamonds out, he made a mark in the ones he didn't want to cut, but ultimately we ended up separating each row, so this would only matter if you left the entire grid intact. Next, using a much sharper X-Acto knife than the one Corey is using, cut out each section to use as a stencil. Also, don't cut all the way into the point or you will make them weak and they could separate. Leave yourself some room with the cardboard at each intersection of the diamond pattern. This will be covered later with the smaller diamond pattern. We'll add with a contrasting paint color. Once we had each row cut out, we began placing them on the mat and securing them with painter's tape. Please note that this stencil won't lay perfectly flat, so you'll have to use pressure to hold down sections when you go to paint it to prevent bleeding onto the unpainted portion of the mat. So be sure to wear a glove for this process.
To help keep them all from separating while painting, we taped each individual row together as well. I also had Corey cut out a small diamond stencil from the cardboard, which I will use in a later step. We still had the rubberized undercoating spray paint from our Christmas mat, so we didn't have any added expense for that, but honestly, you could use any spray paint you have on hand. The rubberized just lasts a bit longer with wear and tear. Again, be sure to wear gloves and a mask, and also remember to hold down the stencil to help keep the paint from bleeding under the cardboard. You will get some overspray, which is kind of inevitable. Allow to completely dry before removing the stencil pattern. For the final step, we need to add the smaller diamonds to each intersecting larger diamonds as the Ballard Designs doormat has. And I really wanted to create a rust color to contrast with the black, but as you will see here shortly, it ended up looking orange instead of rust. And I think it's because I grabbed terracotta instead of the color rusted pipe. I simply stippled the paint on with a sponge brush because I didn't have a small stipple brush, but I think the stipple brush would probably have worked better. Now this did take some time, so put on a good audiobook or your favorite show and enjoy the process. As you can see, the color was orange, and not that this is bad, it would have been great for Halloween, but it was not the look I was after, so I decided to repaint over the smaller diamonds with the color Real Brown, and I was so much happier with how it turned out. This was not a super huge savings at $27, but it was a savings nonetheless. That does it for our high-end look-alikes, but I did want to share our vintage lamps with you. We got them all cleaned up by using a mixture of half vinegar, half water, and a stiff brush. I do end up using some Barkeeper's Friend here in a bit, and it really does help get some of the tarnish off. I didn't want them super shiny because I love that aged look, so I was careful not to remove too much of the tarnish. Also, these were not plugged in and we hadn't rewired them at this point, so it was perfectly fine to set them in the sink to rinse down. The ceramic and brass lamps had this cute key and chain detail, but the chain was really rusted, so Corey gave it a coat of Rust-Oleum to help hinder the rusting process, and once it dried, I went in with some rub and buff in European gold to spruce them up. Corey also rewired these lamps off camera, but we do have a short video on how to rewire vintage lamps, which I will leave linked in the description box below for you. And we also added new felt to the bottom of each lamp. and I can't believe how much better they looked once I had the rub and buff on to cover up that rust. Mm -hmm. 
They are just so beautiful, and even better, the two sets of lamps cost us only $18 total from an estate sale. The lampshades I bought were from At Home, and I will leave a link in the description box below. These lamps are all ready now to go into our new home. Our very last project for this video is to do a little makeover on a bench we've owned for about 20 years. I love the wrought iron detail and everything about it is in great shape except for the fabric on the cushion. It had become discolored over the years and was in need of replacing. We went to Joanne's Fabrics and found the perfect size remnant fabric. This first one is a Krypton fabric, Dalmatian eggshell is the color, and it was 70% off its original price of $59.99 a yard. And the second fabric we found is also Krypton, which will last and last. This one is in the color Nomad Snow, and it was also 70% off the original price of $59.99 a yard. I was partial to the Nomad Snow for the bench, but Corey really liked the Dalmatian eggshell as it had more of a chenille look to it. Now, I will say I thought this was going to be an easy switch out of fabric since everything else about the cushion was in good shape, but the amount of staples in this thing was crazy. We did keep the underlining since it still looked good and reused it, which saved us on the expense. The remnant fabric was the perfect size and only required minimal trimming at the end. We ended up using Corey's Brad nailer gun because the stapler just wasn't making it through the wood. Corey and I are by no means experts in reupholstering furniture. We really just kind of wing it and make it look the best we can when it comes to corners. We have no technique. Sometimes trimming the fabric works best to achieve a smooth corner, and sometimes just gathering up the fabric works best. In the end, we just want it to look nice and last.
Once we had the fabric secured and looking good, we reattached the underlayment. I also gave the metal frame a good cleaning before Corey reattached the top cushion to the frame. And now we have ourselves a newly upholstered bench for under $10. We want to thank you all for being here with us today, and we hope we've inspired you to do some projects in your own home. Let us know in the comments which project was your favorite. Thank you again for all your support here on our channel, and we'll see you all very soon in the next one. Bye for now.